Okay, so hello and welcome to this case study uh, presentation with SAR, who we are delighted to have as a co-sponsor for the International Airport Online Summit. I'm Craig Walters, the editor of International Airport Review, and joining me now is uh, Sharik Ragnar from Director, uh, the Director, sorry, of uh, Data and Analytics from SAR, and we also have Albert Shen, the Southern Regional Smart Communities and National Lead for Smart Airports at Verizon. Sharik and Albert uh, will explore the um, or how Verizon's 5G networks are transforming airports and unlocking operational challenges using 5G enabled analytics. We are running a, uh, an audience poll during this uh, session, so please head over to the poll tab on the viewing platform to cast your vote and we will take a look at the results of that in a little while. Um, afterwards, um, Sharik and Albert will also spend some time um, answering some audience questions. So if you want them to expand on anything or you have a question to ask, then please uh, use the questions tab, which you'll find um, on the viewing platform also. So that's all from me, Sharik and Albert. It's now over to you, please. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Considering there are breadth of attendees joining us from all over the world, good morning, afternoon and evening. I'm Sharik Wagner, Director of Data Analytics, Azar. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Before we dive in, uh, I just wanted to cover a couple of things. As an organization, we help uh, airports make sense of data using analytics and connectivity that enables it. And it's the connectivity part that we are focusing in today's uh, talk that unlocks operational and commercial use cases using 5G that traditionally has been challenging to enable at scale. So how do we operate between ourselves and ZAR? Uh, like most things, you know, steps are fantastic. We do this in five steps. We create connected airports, accelerate the digital transformation, secure your tech and data assets, analyze change using data, and enhance the customer digital experience. With that, I'm now going to hand over to my colleague, Albert. Well, good morning. Uh, yes, my name is Albert Shen. I'm with Smart Communities and the National Lead for Smart Airports here at Verizon. I am based here in Dallas, Texas. So happy to be here uh, and participating in this great international conference and pleasure to meet many of you from all over the world during this uh, challenging time. So um, why don't we just jump right into it, Sharik, and go to the next slide. Absolutely. So there we go. Yeah, so the conversation here is about 5G and the importance of 5G. Uh, and private 5G here on how we can apply it to airports. Uh, here in the US, uh, you know, 5G policy is a little bit different than European policy in which it is, uh, you know, offered by the government and the carriers here purchase the spectrum where in other parts of the world where they actually, uh, the facility can own the spectrum too as well. So, but for Verizon, we as 5G are identifying as really the fourth uh, industrial revolution in terms of its ability to deliver uh, services, edge computing, uh, lower latency times, and just overall much higher speeds and much higher capacity in industry, community, business, and all different sectors. So we're just now going to see, as we've launched here in the United States, uh, our 5G network in terms of the real applications, what it can do. Uh, in how I view 5G in a lot of ways is really, it is the base of innovation. And much like the Apple iPhone per se, where the device uh, was created by the manufacturer, but the applications on top of it is the innovation that comes on top of it. So it really opens the door to many different applications in which the innovators around the world will be able to use 5G to do even more amazing things that we can adapt to. So uh, next slide. So for Verizon, we identify eight main attributes or currencies and how the basis of the 5G networks can bring its full potential. Uh, reliability, throughput, service deployment, mobility, 
connected devices, energy efficiency, data volume, and latency. So we think about these are all the major elements in which 5G is based upon and which it will deliver through. Next slide. Uh, as I said, energy efficiency is one of the major things uh, it will be able to bring. It will bring up to 90% uh, less 4G when compared per bit. With 5G, it's much more, it can handle more complex functions within the network near the end user. And therefore the device will not need as much processing capability and will consume less energy. Uh, so that will actually help uh, overall facilities in terms of when it uses 5G. Next slide. And latency, most, uh, most critical things and because of the speed uh, that will be able to deliver. Therefore with mobile edge computing now and latency that with many solutions that are going to be adapted on the edge and, be, and will lower that latency time so that things can be processed much quickly, more quickly, and actually less data storage too as well. So next slide. So I wanted to show, kind of get more into really the physical dynamics of how 5G operates. And, and if you think about, uh, you know, where an airport or facility will own the spectrum, this is how Verizon or a carrier would come in, in terms of uh, putting in the actual infrastructure of that 5G. So this is a, a depiction of an actual deployment that we have here in Seattle, Washington at CenturyLink Field. Uh, so it is a football stadium or American football stadium. You can see around where the antennas are set. So in different locations in, the, in order to reach the maximum audience. Uh, we have launched in many different NFL stadiums around the country, six airports and many other cities around the United States. So this is a specific example, real time in which a use case and where we have deployed 5G at a NFL stadium. Next slide. So you can see where they're actually deployed, the antennas in the facility itself. I mean, they're really nothing complicated, but it's really the location and aesthetics, which is sometimes gets, uh, gets into the way of things uh, that people are very concerned about. But as you can see, the antennas in themselves are pretty small uh, and where they can be adapted and they can be you know, aesthetically uh, pleasing so that it's really nothing that could be uh, you know, obtrusive to any type of visual visualization. So, uh, so I just wanted the audience to be able to see, this is an example of what an actual deployment would look like in an NFL stadium here in the United States. Next slide. Um, obviously we're here because of airports and many challenges we're facing in this pandemic era. Uh, when you think about the major pillars of the airport where we're all familiar with the land side, terminal 10 and, and AOA areas, uh, where how 5G can definitely benefit in terms of the operations and making things much more slowly. But obviously with the pandemic and uh, COVID-19, uh, you know, we have all suffered greatly in terms, of, uh, in terms of passenger volume and revenue. So how can 5G help at this time to be able to bring back some of that revenue capture for the airlines and the airports directly? Next slide. Uh, so Verizon has a suite of solutions in-house in terms of how it wants to be able to use 5G on top of network. Our solutions do work on the 4G LTE network, but with the deployment of 5G, it will operate even more quickly and more efficiently. Uh, so the main pillars uh, are around parking, traffic, and public safety. So if you go to the next slide, Sharik. So intelligent lighting is one that's a that is, uh, is one of the major solutions that we use in terms of airports and other cities around the, uh, in the US, uh, because by the network and applying intelligent lighting on walkways, airport roadways, parking lots, uh, rental car facilities, charter bus, cruise lots, that we actually control each individual light and it actually helps with maintenance uh, crews in terms of identifying which lights are out more quickly through their own mobile device. So uh, with, with a 5G network, this will operate even much more quickly, uh, especially in the world of parking, traffic, and transportation, where it can really help in terms of managing curbside and roadway management analytics. If you think about many uh, airports around the world during the pre-COVID era, the fact that you know, curb, curbsides were very congested with many different uses, by many different companies and charter companies too as well, whether for us, the Ubers and Lyfts, we're very clogging up the roadway. So by able to use visual analytic or video analytics and 5G as part of driving that information that uh, operators and airport, airport operators can actually help manage you know, the usage and, and capture data usage too as well in a much more quickly and efficient manner when it comes to parking, traffic and transportation at an airport. 
On the public safety side, obviously, you know, surveillance around the airport is very critical. Uh, wildlife mitigation uh, in terms of identifying, you know, any, any wildlife that may intrude through the airport perimeter area onto it and they can deliver that information much more quickly. Uh, Real-time responses really for law enforcement where we can take uh, disparate video systems from all across an airport and put it all into one common platform uh, for, an act, for law enforcement so they get better situational awareness before a situation, before they arrive at a situation so they know what is going on. So that real-time information. And also capture citizen data in terms of when uh, uh, passengers or citizens see something going on, they capture that on mo all our mobile devices. They can then upload it into the real-time response system for digital evidence management. So next slide. So this is a real time, also an example of one of our uh, Verizon partners in terms of how we can use 5G. Uh, in, and this is a LIDAR based system in terms of actually monitoring uh, how people are moving within, in this case, an example of a terminal. So they help manage in terms of social distancing where uh, people are congregating too much, therefore the mitigation measures can be deployed uh, by airport personnel or airline staff to, to, to minimize, uh, you know, to minimize crowd control at these different levels. So this is just sort of a visualization of how, how that works in terms of moving, uh, looking at people movement in a facility. Next slide. Uh, hand washing. So in terms of the technology, I mean, LIDAR is used uh, in many different applications already, but in terms of the innovation that is happening with some of our partner companies in terms of how you can actually use LIDAR in an airport environment or any other type of facility to actually see are people washing their hands now. So, um, so it's an interesting application, but these are sort of the innovation that we're seeing right now in terms of to try and help a facility such an airport be able to manage in terms of our people being clean. Obviously with COVID night right, night right now that uh, you know we're seeing much more cleaner airports, cleaner aircraft, and this is one way to help understand our people actually adhering to hand washing standards. Next slide. Uh, social distancing too, again, a way to be able to capture that types of movement and actually it'll give you alerts and analytics and actually help you track that and the movement of people count people in area, detect certain behaviors potentially uh, in that area and actually give alerts you know, to airport staff as well in terms of our people social distancing, you know, say in the baggage claim level or in the terminal or at the gate level too as well. So next slide. So if you think about also one thing that airlines that we're having conversations with in terms of what, are, what can they do because airlines are so challenged right now economically here in the US and obviously around the world because COVID and with the workforce reductions that we're looking at because of COVID-19, you know, what are airlines thinking about? So these are some of the conversations that we're having with airlines in terms of their business goals. You know, how can, uh, you know, mechanics and engineers on the maintenance side in terms of, uh, you know, turning over aircraft. And these are a list of questions that are being asked by airports and or the airlines specifically, you know, when it comes to predictive maintenance, uh, how can mechanic can repair the aircraft more quickly using digital tools, uh, the inventory and purchase of ground transport equipment. So all these various elements are what airlines are thinking about in terms of how can 5G from a network perspective be able to use those solutions. Uh, because it's very critical and important right now because we have to think about you know, digi digitization of the maintenance of aircraft and especially to make things more efficient for airlines because of their lower revenue right now. So the dependence of technologies is even more amplified and more of a necessary need right now. So this is again, just a brief list in terms of those questions that we've been talking to with various airlines here in the US specifically. Next. Uh, even gets into the ramp operations and too as well, you know, in terms of uh, the safety and security of lost baggage, you know, real-time communication between pilots and teams. Uh, if you think about it, when we're sitting on airplanes at times in terms of uh, waiting for a part, we, we've heard that a lot when we sit on an airplane. Uh, so how can 5G and these, net, these new type of solutions help airlines and their maintenance staff on the ramp operations operate more quickly and efficiently? How can be predictive in using, uh, getting parts from other parts of their operations to their aircraft more quickly uh, for those maintenance crews as well? So. Uh, again, these are really sort of the automation type of capabilities and questions and goals that are being discussed 
uh, you know, between us and the airlines and how can we bring using 5G, uh, you know, whether it's private or public at that specific airport and what are some of the solutions that we can design to help those airlines design so they can be more effective economically. So next slide. Uh, so as, as, as we enter into, you know, even more of a pandemic management, uh, because this is still a very young, uh, uh, young ecosystem in terms of applications because our world got thrown upside down because of COVID. So now immediately we're seeing the art of the possible what is going on. Because for many of us that were around during 9-11, we saw immediate transformation from the infrastructure of airports from uh, you know, explosive thermal detection be able to over to uh, and video surveillance. So very immediately, at least here in the US, so airports of the future are now thinking about many of these different types of solutions uh, with the uh, amplified passenger connectivity. Uh, fever detection is something that we've seen a lot of. You know, I know parts of Asia, Asia airports already have those in place. So US airports and European airports may not have not. Uh, social distance and monitoring, uh, possible food and concessions delivery straight to the gate. So you use your mobile device and to actually have food delivered there instead of standing in line at the, uh, at the restaurant. Um, robotics too, uh, more touchless based systems. I know that we've all been talking about a lot throughout this conference and other parts of airports overall in terms of how can more touchless based systems be used. Uh, smart and safe baggage handling and tracking, uh, airline and air, uh, airport workforce remote training. Uh, again, what we just went over operations and digital maintenance and processes, uh, perimeter drone detection, FOD detection is one that we've had conversations with, with the FAA in terms of looking at uh, video analytics in terms of how to actually better use video ability to capture any type of FOD that, FOD that is on the uh, aircraft operating areas. And also in terms of uh, airport operations too, as well, in terms of uh, within the terminal, how can airports themselves with the multiple, because they are 24 seven, 365 day facilities, how can artificial intelligence with 5G help airport operations manage people much more quickly, more efficiently, given the challenges right now in the, in the pandemic era. So um, this is, was a very high level, very quick conversation in terms of what are the arts of the possible and what we're looking at. Uh, so we're definitely looking forward to the questions coming up later on. So I'm going to turn this back over to Sharika. and thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Albert. Fantastic. So before we go into questions, uh, I wanted to cover a couple of things. So uh, I think, thank you, Albert, for sharing not only what you know 5G could mean to the airport, but also that is, it's the next evolutionary step in terms of automation and how the eight uh, currencies need to be considered when evaluating whether a 5G network can you know, deliver its full potential. Uh, let's cover a couple of more things and then what we'll do, we'll, we'll go back to Craig in terms of questions. So the way we see it in terms of the you know, future and key changes that will happen due to the advantage of, you know, advantage of 5G at airports are specifically gonna be around uh, IoT, artificial intelligence, efficiency and digital experience. Let's cover the first one. Uh, everything intelligent in, in the future will be connected using 5G, not just due to the bandwidth, but more importantly, due to this low latency that gives you more control over autonomous machines. Second, uh, AI and machine learning models will play a key role in the future smart airports by taking advantage of mobile edge computing. Uh, third, operational efficiency in, in all parts of the airports, land side, air side, runway, and taxi areas. Fourth, and probably most important one, is the digital relationship with the passenger of an airport and enhances the quality of the passenger experience to increase ref revenue uh, from the passenger itself. Now, how do we sum it up? Uh, together with our partners, I'm just changing the slide. Together with our partners, we provide a managed enterprise solutions that deliver digital outcomes starting with uh, you know, public cloud, private cloud infrastructure, uh, edge computing, and more importantly, what will be uh, play a key role in the future will be 5G uh, that enables number of use cases that Albert has described uh, earlier and more that we haven't unearthed yet. And then to, you know, we combine that together into our data analytics platform as well uh, called Data Park. So I'll hand it back to Craig to uh, ask us any questions. 
That's great. Thank you both um, so much there. Really great insight, good presentation. Um, I'm aware of time, so um, what I'd like to do first is, is take a look at the results of the poll that we've been running, um, where the audience have been casting their vote. Um, so the question that we asked was, um, when looking to implement public-private 5G networks, what kind of implementation timeframe are you planning for? And the options that people could vote for were one to two years, two to four years, five to 10 years, 10 years or more, or undecided. And the most popular um, result um, with 50% of the audience said uh, within one to two years, um, and 25% for 10 years or more, and 25% undecided. Um, so I'm keen to get your um, reaction to those results there. Um, Sharik, did you want to um, give us your opinion on that? I think it's, it's fantastic, that, you know, 50% almost of the audience still has a plan to, you know, implement 5G at the airports within the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, and this would have been a lot more earlier if it would have been due to the pandemic, uh, like you know, Albert was saying earlier as well. So it, it's fantastic news, absolutely. Uh, it's great to see that people still have the confidence and still have the strategic vision to be able to you know, build smart airports using 5G within 12 to 14 months. Good, and um, Albert, uh, a reaction from you? Yeah, I mean, right now, at least, you know, for us here in the U.S., when it comes to it, we are Verizon is moving forward as quickly as possible and not altering any plans when it comes to deployment of 5G. We've just launched uh, in six airports right now. We plan to launch in many other airports around the country over the next six to 12 months. So it is continuing uh, because, you know, because the spectrum policy here is different because, you know, we own the spectrum. So we're applying it, so it's a matter of getting uh, the antennas and equipment into the airport itself directly. Uh, so, but that in itself is we have our own, you know, uh, bureaucracies and how we deal with that. But nevertheless, uh, Verizon's 5G strategy right now is to the continue deploying regardless of what is going on. So we are looking forward to continuing to expand that here in the U.S. Excellent, thank you. Okay, so let's um, take a look at some questions, shall we? So um, we have one here from, um, from Vijay, um, who um, is concerned about um, 5G um, in the sense of how does it um, impact um, birds and wildlife? Um, can 5G harm um, wildlife or, or is that just a speculation around the technology? Um, he goes on to say, um, you know, we as humans are only part of the globe um, and we don't own it entirely. So we still must consider wildlife. Um, what would you both say in response to that? Um, so you know, does 5G um, harm wildlife? So um, Albert, would you like to respond first? Uh, yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of questions in regard to the health effects of 5G and, you know, the antennas and, you know, so, um, but everything, you know, to date when it comes to the health studies and, you know, our experts, there has been no indication that it has any impact on both humans and wildlife at all. So, um, but I'm happy to get other information, you know, for as follow up as this conference to get that out there. So, but yes, there has been studies done on that. And so far, there's been no indication that there have been any effects on the health or wildlife. Good. Excellent. And Sharik, anything to add? Uh, nothing to add. Obviously, we got the, you know, we got the access to the same expert studies that Albert has uh, and, you know, support what you just said, basically. Excellent. Thank you. So another question that we have here, um, Michael is asking, um, many people's view is that 5G is just faster than um, 4G and 3G. Um, so does it offer anything more than just um, a speed and um, bandwidth increase? Um, Sharik, how would you react to that? Mm. I think uh, the thing is being have, you know, being able to have your own, you know, software defined network gives you a lot more ability uh, to mani manipulate and implement uh, solutions around that. And, you know, we covered it earlier as well. It's not just about the bandwidth as well. It's the latency side of it, obviously, that's going to be key in uh, bringing, you know, bringing out autonomous machinery that can actually help us uh, building smart infrastructure, not just airport, of course. Great. And Albert, anything to add? 
Uh, no, I, I think pretty much all those. I mean, yes, it is a speed and capacity, but you know, the data volume, uh, the reliability. You think the applications of autonomous vehicles, um, you know, mobile devices, the applications on top of that. So I've uh, I've actually tested it once before, and it is amazing the speed in which you can deliver and actually download information much more quickly, more efficiently. So. Um, like I said, it is, it is opening up the door of innovation. And I think that's really the platform and, and really on how to think about this. So, um, but once people, you know, get access to it, you know, fully, uh, they will see the power of what 5G can actually do. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So let's take um, another question. Um, we have Gordon, um, who is asking, um, what areas within the airport do you see the main benefits of deploying 5G? Um, is it airside? Is it um, on ramp? Um, is it for security? Um, Sharik, did you want to go first? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think it's all and above, right? Uh, because it, you know, it's like we said, you know, it's a network that kind of is available throughout the airport. You know, yes, it starts with the land side uh, from a passenger experience, having that digital innovation to speak to your passengers in terms of virtual reality. Uh, you know, awareness in terms of where passengers are, going through all the way to the air side and, you know, uh, you know, making some of the existing operational activities, accelerating them, making it faster, making it a bit more reliable as well. So uh, I think it covers all parts of them, but I think where it's probably going to be used, you know, initially where people will drive a lot more advantage in the current environment will be probably more air side uh, to enhance in terms of operational and situational awareness. Okay, thank you. And Albert, um, what do you think? I, I think actually what we'll, we will also see is, you know, on the land side, uh, because that's where, you know, passengers are, you know, that's where passengers are going to be first. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the technology that's being deployed, you know, like our lighting, our public safety, our tram station op parking optimization, those are actually relatively, you know, mature technologies. So to put those right on top of 5G would be much quickly. The ramp operations uh, type of uh, you know, the ramp operations and maintenance type of solutions we're looking for, you know, it's going to take a little time to develop, in my opinion. But regardless, uh, the need of it right now is concurrently just as quick, and I think even more urgency on the airline side because of the economic challenge that they're facing and their drastic workforce reductions that is happening right now in real time. Uh, so they need the technology more quickly. So, so I think you'll see an acceleration on that side, uh, but it is converging together in which, uh, you know, as 5G gets deployed, uh, then you will see an acceleration of solutions are gonna come on top of that. Of course, thank you, excellent. Um, so I think we've got time um, for just one uh, more question. So um, what do you think is the outlook for the US aviation industry um, for next year, 2020, 2021 um, and beyond? Um, Sharik, what do you think um, the future will look like? I think for that one, I think the best person to ask, answer is the national lead of US airports, <laughs> Albert. Uh, you know, okay, I, I will slightly take my uh, Verizon hand off a little bit here because I was a uh, former Obama administration appointee. And frankly, I think in order for us to recover, we'll take a global coordinated response to addressing this pandemic. And it takes leadership to do that. And, you know, in terms of uh, both from a health standards, but also in terms of giving businesses clear guidance. Uh, both on the airport and the airline side in terms of what are the standards to adhere to? What are we all going to agree on? So uh, it has to be an, a global coordinated response. And I think uh, it, that's going to have to allocate because the pandemic obviously is surging in some places and decreasing. And it's just a very oscillating economy uh, and actually the impacts of the virus. So uh, until we get that under control, we're going to see a depressed you know, traveling market because people just aren't going to feel safe, you know, so and the airlines and airports too don't want to take a lot of that liability either, but it is all necessary to continue global travel. So I think uh, it, the outlook, you know, can be positive, but, you know, we'll see what happens after this election. I know a lot of us here in the US are, uh, you know, uh, cautiously uh, optimistic of what's going to happen, but nevertheless, 
uh, you know, the U.S. government it will have to help lead us through that effort. At least that's, you know, with my old former hat on. So, um, but definitely looking forward to coordinating and collaborating with all the international partners here on this, on this conference, because I think we're all here together. And the innovation I have seen uh, so far around different airports uh, has been spectacular. So, um, but again, this is going to be a global response and we can get through it together. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Um, Sharik and Albert, thanks so much. Um, excellent presentation. Um, and um, thank you so much for giving your, your answers to those questions too. Um, so thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So a message to um, the audience um, to please go and check out the sponsors and exhibitors page on the platform um, where you can find out more from Zar and to also connect with their team. So next to come on the agenda for the summit is a session to explore how health and well-being can be incorporated into airport design and operation. So we hope that you can join us for that one. So Sharik and Albert, um, thank you once again and goodbye. Thank you.